to my wonderful husband, Doe Stane, for his immense support from day one. None of what we have achieved would have been remotely possible without his constant support, his ongoing generosity and goodwill. Thank you, Rajan, for signing the checks. <laughs> to the media, really, thank you for putting us on the map. Thank you for bright, warm, colourful, blanket coverage over the past nine years, and thank you for keeping it exciting. Special mention to my friend Yusuf Stevens and Cheeky Media. Cheeky Media, where are you? Can't see out there. Thank you, thank you. For putting our stories together and broadcasting them all from day one. And now, <laughs> we are looking so forward to our massive local blankets is Lekka 2023. And I can't wait to see what our amazing ambassadors all around our country have up their sleeves in Slapstadt. It's not so much Slapstadt, Karpstadt, Cape Town, Kabecha, Gauteng, Bloemfontein, White River, KwaZulu Natal, Mossel Bay. It's going to be a very, very busy year and a very, very exciting one. And I hope you're all ready for it. <laughs> Where's the crochet? I don't see crochet. Oh, well done, well done. Joe Corlette, rock star. Um, and I see she, Granny Sheila's here as well. You've come all the way from Timbuktu. <laughs> Where's Granny Sheila? Oh, so nice. And she's crocheting. Well done. I want everybody to please raise your right hand. PJ, higher. Higher, higher. Higher. Oh, there we go. Strictly come dancing. <laughs> Put it over your left shoulder. Give yourself a big pat on the back. Thank you so much for being part of our incredible, tightly knit 67 Blankets family. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Blanket. Big round of applause for Mrs. Blanket! Right, it is now my honor to introduce you to a wonderful duo who have been singing together at the Causerie. Now, the Causerie is a beautiful venue at Michael's home. Michael de Pinna is a well-known actor of stage and screen and became a household name a few years ago, it was about 10 years ago, Michael. 12, 12 years ago. He became a famous name in the Vodacom ads. You remember the Vodacom ads? His partner tonight is the beautiful Shlomelo Ledraba. Oh. She has a master's degree in musicology from Wits. And she's also a lecturer at Avda, and she has the most stunning dress and voice. Yay! Here they are to sing, please come up. They are here to sing somewhere out there from the animated movie, An American Tale. Michael and Lumelo. I would like to sing somewhere out there, but that's what we're going to be singing. <laughs> and I have to say to all these wonderful dignitaries here, look, stars of stage, screen, good evening, sir, good evening, madam, and Rajan, thank you for signing the checks, as you said. <laughs> you, in, in the late, what is his name, uh, Mr. For Forsyth, Bruce, do you remember him? You're my favorite. <laughs> Oh, you are, except you're too tall for gardening, so we could never dance together. <laughs> anyway, this is my friend, Shlomela Litwapa. Oh, hi. Who knows more about music than anybody I've ever met. And, that's too and we got together because she is an opera singer, and I'm not an opera singer, I did musical theatre, and she came to see me, and we worked on a lot of musical theatre songs, 
and then they formed a partnership, right? Yeah, we have You've a You've got to come into the life, darling, that oh, dress, and those shoes are beautiful. Look at those, oh, those oh, fabulous shoes, yes. Awesome. Look at those fabulous <laughs> shoes, they don't glitter, right. <laughs> so, we are going to sing for you tonight. All of you have seen a musical or a film called West Side Story, right? And it's, you girls who remember, it's a love story, isn't it? Maria meets Tony. Well, unfortunately tonight, I'm Tony. <laughs> what a beautiful Tony, Michael. Very beautiful Tony, yes. And this is my gorgeous great-granddaughter, Maria, <laughs> who's singing with me tonight. And she is just, well, you're, you're also my favorite, but never mind, we won't have anybody else. So I think, Maestro, if you'd like to play us on, we make it a bit louder. We want to get some response. She's not, she's, she's, she was there. 
And we all know that Jeppy has been a proud supporter of 67 Blanket from day one. Excellent. You see, it's like this. Like. And you walk around everywhere with wool and crochet hooks in your hands. There we go. <laughs> and to tell you more about it, that's enough of me, the head girl of Jeppy High School for Girls, Roma Gugu Kumaru. <laughs> Uh, yes. Greetings to the esteemed guests gathered today at this monumental event. The 67 blankets for Nelson Mandela commemorates a struggle icon who was one of the several men and women who challenged the apartheid regime in Southern Africa. The movement in its essence joins communities, lives and stories through balls of wool and determination. The 67 Blankets Drive has made incredible strides with world record attempts ranging from the world's biggest blanket at Drakenstein to the world's largest scarf in Holwick. The spirit of the drive lies within the love and care individuals possess that greatly enrich the lives of others. These blankets each year are given to the less fortunate and those in need within our communities providing love and demonstrating the humanity within our society. Once a small spark idea, the Blanket Drive is now a global movement driven by Mrs. Caroline Stein. As a school, our involvement in the 67 Blankets Drive has tracked from December 2014, when Mrs. Stein first introduced the initiative, to 2023. We have launched the Blanket Drive this year with the aim of a total of 624 blankets in all. Our late headmistress, Ms. Gonzalez, was fiercely involved in the blanket drive, and according to Ms. Caroline Stain, one of the driving forces that elevated it to its magnitude. It is of great importance that this initiative only rises to greater heights, reaching more lives and acting as a glue that binds people. In Data Madiba's memory, a man of reconciliation and kindness, love, and who believed greatly in the spirit of humanity, we carry on the blanket drive with the hopes of maintaining the ethos and morals which he lived by. Happy ninth birthday, 67 blankets for Nelson Mandela. Thank you for the immense joy you have brought to the lives of many, including us, who have found a greater purpose in doing something for others. To many more birthdays, celebrations, and milestones, may unity and fierce determination prevail as a dominant shared characteristic in all that devote themselves to this initiative. It is a great honor to speak here today, and I wish the 67 Nelson Mandela Banker Drive a fruitful 2023 and many more. Thank you. everybody, no more Google. But I'm going to quickly teach you something to sing. And, and, and I've got a song that I've written for us all. Late for, we will put it on later on the big screen. But for now, I'm going to give you a note. So it's going to go C to G and then F, um, C, G, I think. Oh, there I go. Sorry. Sorry about this. Okay. So it starts off with them. Okay, we're going to carry on now. <laughs> okay. Just remember it started with a C. Okay. All right. 
Now for something completely different. It is a tradition. Yeah, it's, it's, we're giving lots of traditions. We're nine years old, we've got traditions forever now. It's good. To showcase new and innovative talent mixed in with the old accomplished performers. Here is a case in point. The next performance is a solo dance piece by Nico Prinsloo. Now, Nico is a member of the Mzanzi Ballet, founded by Dirk Barnos as a platform to identify and cultivate young South African talent and to bring them together with seasoned professionals. Together, they create pieces that tell truly South African stories. And he has won, he has won international awards already overseas. And he's only 15 years old. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nico Blanksloo. Next, General Carolus is a businesswoman. She was and still is a social activist and a veteran of the struggle for freedom of South Africa. She has held senior executive and non-executive positions in the public sector, the private sector, and civil society organizations. She has served in senior leadership positions in the mass democratic movement, remember the UDF, that led the struggle for freedom during apartheid, including in the progressive women's movement. She has served in the leadership of the ANC when it was unbanned and was instrumental in the processes of policy formulation and constitutional negotiations that shaped democratic South Africa. She remains a strong voice for social justice, democracy, constitutionalism, and the rule of law. A warm welcome, please, for Ms. Cheryl Carolus. Thank you very much. Also the chair of the board of the 67 Black. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I'm speaking from my phone. Mm, and I thought it, it wouldn't. Me, not, not oh, you. not you. Okay. Go to the mic, well, you. firstly, good evening, uh, everybody, especially to a category of people who haven't been mentioned well enough, and that is our knitwits. Very good evening to you. Also 
to the family members who may be present here, but as family, uh, friends and comrades who are present here tonight. And then Caroline, that wonderful, effervescent, irrepressible Caroline. Thank you. Oh. Oh. You don't know, should I bring it closer? Yep. No, I think it might no, be no, no, because no, I'm no, standing here. He's trying to phone. turn you up too mm. loud. Okay. In, 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 in. I used to teach screaming standard seven children. There you go. Okay. So pretend that's standard seven children. And I have quite children. the voice. No, I'm trying to be polite. Okay. And then, <laughs> and my late mother uh, got it at some point that I was never going to be a good lady. I mean, that was just a stretch too far. But she loved the fact that I was a good woman who actually loved being a woman. So, but yeah, so I can project, but I'm trying to be, this is a respectable place in Howard Company. There's judges here, I mean, there's young people here, there's elderly nitwits here. I mean, for heaven's sake, I'm trying to put on my best womanly behavior. <laughs> but Caroline, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this wonderful, joyous, uplifting event and to also add my voice, Mr. Chairman of the Board, happy birthday to the, to the 67 uh, blankets. Now, this morning, I in fact listened, I'm a news junkie, so I listened to the news, I watched the TV, so I've got the three radio stations going, I've got TV going and so on. And as did our beloved father, Tata Madiba. He was also a news junkie. And sometimes when we listen or watch the news, I just end up wondering how on earth don't we all just give up and curl somewhere in a corner, just give up and die, you know? But I know what the answer is. And no, it's not about what we often hear and seek false comfort from. You know, in telling ourselves, you know, we are resilient people, we're a resilient nation, we always bounce back. Well, I can tell you, I have done it in terms of being resilient or bouncing back. I am getting just a little bit tired of having to keep on bouncing <laughs> and being resilient. And I suspect human beings the world over are just tired of being abused and have every right to be hopping mad about what is going on. And they, like me, are just not up for any of this being bounced around anymore. We should take a stand and just refuse to be abused. Mm. Like people's balls that they bounce, <laughs> no, I'm not bouncing anymore. But I'm grateful for working so closely at the feet of some of the most remarkable leaders that the world has seen. Leaders like my Albertina Sisulu, Comrade Oliver Tambo, Uncle Walter Sisulu, Mum Helen Joseph, Uncle Kathy Amat Katharada, Mum Agnes Musimang, Mama Dorothy Tiplangu, <coughs> Auntie Sophie the Brain, and all the others in the generation. I give thanks for the fact that I grew up at this time. They were the mothers and the fathers who shaped me and who held me when I was fragile and who pushed me to great heights of achievement for myself, for my country and for the world. And I wish they were here today with us so that we could seek the wise counsel to help us to deal with the cruel and feral behavior we witness and that we are constantly being subjected to in our country and in the world at the hands of those we trusted with something as sacred as our vote, for which many have laid down their lives. Well, I guess you may say, all good and well, just exactly how does that help us. One of the many affirmations I got from our beloved father and his peers was to constantly respond to something that makes one angry by saying to yourself, so you are angry and quite rightly so. So what are you going to do about it? It's always the question they ask themselves. 
And today, the world over, too many leaders, too many who we have given our trust to, have trampled on it. And the consequences are devastating all over the world when you switch on the team. You see it. And those who bear the brunt are those with the least voice and agency, those who are vulnerable and poor. And the impact of COVID on an already fragile world is seeing a frighteningly growing number of people who have lost everything. And then people have floods, people have all kinds of natural disasters, fires thrown at them. Those who have no hope and in the process, those who constantly lose their dignity because of poverty and deprivation. And the good people, such as we're gathered in this room here, who actually form a very powerful, compelling majority, end up feeling powerless and helpless because these problems just seem so huge and so insurmountable. And this brings me right back to why the 67 Blankets Project is so powerful and so inspirational. Because small acts of kindness are much bigger than just small individual actions. The Blankets campaign bring together individuals and give them a sense of being in a community of people for good, of people who care of people who share their deep sense of care and empathy. Every single person who participates in the knitting, the crocheting of a blanket feel and should be made to feel they are part of a global movement where we join together as a community that is reasserting <laughs> the values of human kindness, of human effort, to re-establish that thing that's become so cheaply thrown around of a wound. And it gives us all a sense of purpose. And if we look at how the campaign has grown, we want the wildest dreams of these two feisty women who initiated the campaign. Zaldino, as my diva called Zelda Lagrange, and Caroline. They've always been just two strong, feisty, can-do women who dream big and who work hard to make their dreams a reality. Both of their own personal lives and journeys tell their own stories in this regard. But Caroline, I don't know where Zaldino is, but I bet the two of you never had a clue of just how big this dream of yours would become today. Today, they have been joined by a passionate, committed, and effective board chaired by a wonderful postmaster in his safari suit and his socks and his coat. Uh, and in fact, they have been the people, the board have been the people who have really ramped this up and who have taken the dream of these two feisty women and in fact, to get across the world, grab the passion of those who actually want to show just straightforward human decency and care. They grab the opportunities offered to them. And they connected people who want to be part of a global family, who want to con contribute to human decency, to rebuild kindness, decency and compassion as the values that should drive all human endeavor, whether it is in your schoolwork, whether it is in business, whether it is in your community work that you do. However, this network endeavor has become more than just doing good deeds. This has inspired many of us to begin to believe again in the power of the communities of good. When we battered around and we are overtaken by these tzotzis. We draw inspiration from and we can believe again how a small action on its own is good but not sufficient to bring about change. Small actions by individuals in concerted action with growing numbers 
can have impact. So can we all just draw courage from this movement? Let us continue to be part of the small actions like knitting, crochet. Let us continue to draw wholesome comfort and inspiration from the wholesome fun in getting together to create our blankets in our regular gatherings. Let us love and be kind to one another in our pursuit of giving warmth and human dignity. And let this inspire us to again believe that we can all do all the other things we must do to take back our country and to take back the world, back from those callous people who take us for granted. I hope that this year we will break lots of new records, Caroline, for the number of blankets that we create for Tata's birthday. Let us make him smile with us. Thank you all in this room, in your own different ways, for inspiring all of us to do what it takes to rebuild a decent world. Thank you for having me. You don't, but there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> what lovely words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, moving on. Our next speaker is Petejo Melo. Is that correct? Petejo Melo. Sorry? That's right, like I said it. Okay, good. He's a grade 10 learner. He's a grade 10 learner at Park Town High School for Girls. And she's constantly smiling. I mean, look at that. Enthusiastic about everything she does. She enjoys water sports and public speaking, which we're going to hear now. I'm looking very forward to that. She's a natural people's person who is willing to help wherever and whenever she is needed. So you are in the right place. Okay. Her involvement with 67 Blankets in, um, in 2022, that's last year, has led to a natural love for crocheting. You love it, eh? and participating in any volunteerism events she can. She volunteers for everything, so she's going to volunteer to speak to us now. Welcome. Please come forward. Big round of applause for Petra. You're going to speak up a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Take it to the microphone. Thank you so much for having me. Nelson Mandela once said, there is no greater gift than that of giving one's time and energy to help another without expecting anything in return. I would like to add on to these wise words by saying, being among such people is an even greater gift. I'd like to start off by thanking Parktown Girls for creating an environment that fosters such behavior and 67 blankets for opening doors where new skills can be learned and eye-opening passions can be found. Today, I am sharing my story, not only to inspire and encourage you to continue the life-changing work you do, but to also show how much of a difference you make in young people's lives. Okay, let's, let's just set the scene here. It's term two of 2022, and the grade nines have just been assigned a long-awaited crocheting project, rumored to be, unfortunately, quite taxing, with unpredictable outcomes. I was among these grade nines who unfortunately had a bleak history with knitting. I'm so sorry, knit, but I tried. <laughs> Therefore, I had little expectations for crocheting to be any better. But was I wrong? Not only did this project create an unknown love for crocheting, but it also created an awareness as to how a simple student in Parktown Girls High 
could make a difference in the smallest ways. With the help of 67 Blankets and the Allo teachers, there they are at the back, Ms. Mchazo, Ms. Sin, and Ms. Hanzinger. Thank you so much. <laughs> Parktown High School for Girls was able to donate more than 367 squares and scarves to benefit those who needed it most during the harsh cold winters of South Africa. <laughs> Volunteerism is not just a link between people and society, but a way of making a difference on a large scale. We can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. And with organizations such as 67 Blankets and the Nelson Mandela Foundation, that compels us to dig deep, to spread the kindness we have in our hearts, and to step closer to the loving, kind world Mandela had envisioned. I would like to end up by saying, our biggest fear is not that we're in inadequate. Our biggest fear is that we are brighter beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. So I say to you, let your light shine. Don't be afraid of letting that light shine. Let it shine. And 67 blankets, let it shine. Um, I would just like to say if there's anyone from the Nelson Mandela Foundation, if we can get a box here behind the podium, please because they are getting younger and younger and shorter and shorter and we won't see them. That was absolutely brilliant. Well done. Right. We are now going to do a lucky draw. Please. This is Jakub. Please round, a round of applause for Jakub. And we thought maybe Johannes will do the draw for us. Okay. And what we are getting, what are we getting? No, no, no. What are we getting? Well, we, wool. We're getting wool. We're getting wool. Yeah, so, so Johannes, if you can draw, and it's a lucky draw, we've got six. Yeah, yeah. Eh? You can't look that. <laughs> right, what have we got there? <laughs> Sylvia Chauke! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can just stay, stay there. We're going to just pass it back. If you just pass it back to Sylvia. Well done, big round of applause for Sylvia. <laughs> Very good, very good. Right, thank you, Johannes. Next one will be... Robisa! <laughs> Yay, there we go. Right, next one. <laughs> there we go. John Motladisi! Yes, John. Ah, there he is. Well done, John. <laughs> Tegan Davies. Where's Tegan? <laughs> Tegan? Tegan, going once. Pardon? Um, what do we think? Should we be no show, no go? Yes. Okay, sorry for Tegan, but it's unanimous, you can hear. Okay. Peter Moore, how do you spell that? Uh, pronounce it. M A U F F. Moore. Moore. Huh? He's down, he's, he's the other. Oh, well, then we must give it to him. William, will you take it to him, please? Thank you. Fern Collie! Where's the representative? Meet me halfway, come! Congratulations! Dan Fern! Right, one more! <laughs> Patty Dwyer! Where's Patty? Oh, there she is! Well done, Patty! A big round of applause for Johannes Khadebe! I know, 
I know they call it Redaby, because when Lucas used to play for Leeds, they said, Lucas Redaby. I know they're, they're, they're not well, those people. Okay, right. Our next artist requires no introduction. Timothy Benoy is a nitwit and a 67 blankets ambassador himself. He has, on his own, made... How many do you think, Hilton? Twelve. No, you're both wrong. Thirty-seven blankets on his own. And, and, and uh, I don't know how I don't know how many scarves, but I've seen him knit about three hundred. Is that a, are we at three four hundred? Eh? Let's leave it at that. Okay, Tim obtained an arts degree in Ohio, USA, and has graced many stages nationally and has proudly sung our national anthem in many large sports arenas, including, I'm sure you all remember, the Rugby World Cup and the FIFA World Cup opening ceremony in 2010, right? That's right. A warm welcome for Timothy Malloy, who sings now. Take it away, Tim. Well, it doesn't seem like a... Yes, stop the track. It doesn't seem like a long time ago when we were turning one years old. And here we are, nine years later. I can't believe all the milestones we've reached, all the world records we've set and broken. I look around here and I'm just proud of all the work that you have all done. Yes. So I want to dedicate this beautiful song. It's entitled Proud, which I'm sure we all are. This song was made famous by the wonderful and people and I'm going to dedicate it to all of you today. I look into the window of my mind Reflections are the feeling of love that we are Feel my spirit rising proud. 
He went on to become Deputy Chief Justice of the Constitutional Court, now retired, Chancellor of the University of the Witwatersrand, Rand, and he, he also has seven honorary doctorates. Please welcome Justice Dekong Wataneke. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. One second, excuse me, Judge. Um, 14 honorary doctorates, and I apologize. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> well, Madiba had <coughs> over a hundred honorary doctorates. That's how the, the world loved him. I. Well, thank you. I won't keep you long. Judges often write every word they utter because they have to justify the outcomes they reach. <laughs> if you had to sentence somebody to a life imprisonment, there should have enough time to read every word you said about why they should end up in prison for life. Or if we're to liquidate a company, these directors and shareholders would want to read and know why this happened at all. I've done none of all that. I said to lovely Caroline, I'm not going to do a keynote address. I'm not going to write a text. I'm going to say a few things and sit down and allow me to do so. And the first of these is to thank you for the invitation. You wrote back very graciously and said, you thought I might not accept, and here am I. <clears throat> and this turned out to be just an incredible therapeutic evening for me, Caroline. That goes to chair of the board and all your board members, <coughs> and I decided to talk to these lovely young people. I'm going to do so in a moment. 
I was saying to my good comrade and friend in the struggle, Shiao, and she has had me say this before, I have revolutionary depression. I have patriotic depression. And she talked beautifully about it. We bounced around, <coughs> tossed around, with no real outcomes. That Madiba dreamt for all of us, that we all dreamt together about. And therefore, I've been going through quite a intense depression. Everything seems to be going. Everything you and I and Data fought for seems to be just fading and slipping through and I, our fingers. And I come here tonight, Captain, and I'm lifted, incredibly energized. My batteries have been recharging as I was sitting there. In fact, it's the first occasion I've attended since the new year. And posing a whole range of questions to myself about what is purposeful, what is meaningful, what ought I do, what ought people of our country do in order to, to lift us from this terrible vortex of unhappiness. <coughs> and here you come, and you say to me, come. And I come out here, and suddenly, wonderful things come back to mind. And I'd like, I don't want to keep you long, because so many wonderful things have been said, and still have been done. So I, I really thought that I would spend the time to talk about three things. And the first of these is agency. Happy birthday, 67 blankets for Nelson Mandela. Very well done. But we've gone through time in our country where most of our people have lost agency. The duty we all bear and carry to make a difference for starters in our own lives. To start an organization, you, Zelda, and whoever else who comes along, the Midwoods and all of you, and do this, which you heard about this evening, this ample, overflowing agency identify good things, take all the necessary steps to achieve them, and do them with faithfulness, with dedication, and have them done. <clears throat> Agency is about us understanding that as we wake up, we've got to brush our teeth, we've got to get ourselves ready, get into our uniforms, be in the assembly in the morning at school, and get the day going. And you can extrapolate that into larger things and projects in our lives. And you can move them on onto our nation. We have to build a bridge over Mishatuza River and do everything with honesty and hard work and dedication and hopefully lawfully and build a bridge. Now we've got to need blankets. 67 to what, 120,000? And do it with papos, link up with others, think through the steps that ought to be taken for those outcomes to be achieved, and to achieve them. Transparently, and have all of us come and know about it and see it. So for you young people, I mean, there is something that you never should give up. Agency, you sitting in the center, and you dedicating yourself to think through what it is you want to achieve and what are the steps that ought to be taken to have those outcomes come out there. And Carolyn, you teach us that endlessly, continuously, and make sure that we understand that we could knit up societies in a meaningful way and work together in order to produce outcomes. But the second thing I thought I want to talk about and that we all the time need in society is an incredible sense of caring 
and compassion. Let me reel back. Uh, my favorite line for little young people is, good people give, bad people take. Have you got that? Good leaders give. Their thought, their vision, their loyalty to their people. And bad leaders take. and take for themselves. And that is something which I would hope, let you young people, to have it written out within <coughs> your <coughs> sort of controlling principles of life. Let's endeavor to do things that would make sure that others come off better out of it. Not your last penny, not your last endeavor, but certainly we should make more and more time to do that. And think for a moment about all our councillors. Think a moment for all our politicians. Think a moment for if every one of them simply had that simple mantra that is bad to take, even worse to take from those who need it most. And it is good to give, it's good to recreate, add value and support others. And as you do that, You've got this incredibly ripple effect, which we see coming out of 67 blankets all the time. I sit with Caroline on a board, <coughs> excuse me, Johannesburg Philharmonic Orchestra. And she dutifully comes out there as we try and create and recreate music, both classical and indigenous, in order to make an offering to our nation. She comes out with amazing modesty and she sits quietly there and makes a contribution. And we'll say a word about this incredible work that she does for our country. And more importantly, on the, on, on the values that exudes from, from the project. So I really thought I'd take the time to thank you personally. And, and I know that there are so many people around you and that it's a collective and it's a joint effort to get to where we are. That's exactly what our country needs. Not more grants, not more grants, but more and more people meeting, and often not meeting for themselves, but in order to meet for others, to give others. And if we're to get to that point, you'll see what a different nation we all would be. And lastly, I'd like to say something about our beloved leader and our first president of the Republic of South Africa. Some of you may know you've heard, I grew up as my father on Robben Island. And when he passed on, before he passed on, he said to me, Dekhan, will you look after me when I'm no longer alive? Of course, I didn't immediately understand what it was. He really meant that will you be executor in my estate? Will you step into my shoes and deal with my personal affairs? Not public, but personal affairs. And I say this as a parting shot just to remind you that in every nation, ever so rarely, a woman or a man, Billy Ginoala, for instance, is one such woman for whom I wrote a tribute just the other day. What a man, Nelson Mandela, another one, who would stand above us, who would generate a vision that surpasses all the little defects that sit amongst us and within us, who would seek to inspire us into a higher zone and higher level to make us one people to banish all the lines that divide us and to keep us going. And therefore, Caroline, each time you link up 67 Blancas with Nelson Mandela, you really are saying to us, remember those high values. Remember where we come from, and some of us know it more than others. I spent 10 years 
with him on Robben Island. He spent 27 years. So man was a little teeny weeny 10 years. He was three times that. And we link up again after all that years of bondage. And he comes out with this incredible vision, way beyond all of us, his comrades, and requiring us to do those things that I've talked about. But we ought to have agency, preparedness to do things and change our circumstances. Plant a little tree there, a little vegetable there, knit blankets, make sure that things work around. For them, God said, give us electricity. Make sure that it works. Make sure that ESCOM works. All that is the agency that he had in mind and hoped that our nation would have as he helped recreate our own country. We need to have compassion and care for others and do it collectively as we meet up together with each other. And lastly, if you follow what I've been saying, we need to keep those high values out are going to create a non-racial inclusive society. It must be one that is just socially and economically for all of us. We must make sure that we have a rule of law because otherwise the rest becomes a jungle. And let's pray for all our judges and magistrates. And you should pray for me too, who worked for you for over 20 years as a judge. <laughs> Somebody must blow the referee, and we are, and we must achieve the society that Madiba envisioned, and you helping us remind, to remember that every single day. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That was fantastic. Big round of applause for the judge. So that's the way it's going to go. This is the beast. It's the beast, the beast's one. <laughs> right. Okay, where are we? Oh, yes. Gosh. I'm very excited now. Are you all very excited? Okay. Because now, the next young lady who's going to perform for us needs no introduction. Born in Durban, also fondly known as Kandeka, which means beloved. beloved or the loved one. Yes. PJ Powers is certainly well loved by many South Africans the world over, and the world over. She became the lead singer of an all female group called Panther. That was very good. <laughs> then went on to front Hotline, which I think is still my favorite band of all time. <laughs> Her solo career, she has performed with Ladysmith, Black Mambazo, shared the stage with many greats like Eric Clapton, Joan Armour Trading, Hugh Masakela, to name but a few. Here is PJ to sing Jabulani! <laughs> Hello. Um, to say that I'm intimidated is probably the biggest understatement on the planet. First
Everybody. 